Hey everyone, welcome to day two of Advent of Code 2022. I'm actually filming this intro after I'm done with the puzzles and the explanations just to make things a bit more streamlined. But in this video, I will be doing the puzzles. You'll see a time lapse of that real quick. And then I'll be explaining all of these solutions um, along with my code. If you want to see my code, they're on my GitHub repository, which you can find in the description below. Enjoy the time lapse. All right, so day two is rock, paper, scissors. Let's walk through the puzzle. Basically, what we have is an encrypted study guide, which is our input, um, that the elves say is going to help us win. There are two columns in this strategy guide. The first contains A's, B's, and C's. So A is for rock, B is for paper, and C is for scissors. And the second column, suddenly the elf is called away to help with someone's tent. So we don't know what the second column means, but we decide to infer some things about it. Um, X probably means rock, Y means paper, and Z means scissors. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate our score if we follow the strategy guide, given that the first column is what our opponent plays and the second column is what we play. So how is score calculated? Well, um, we have two separate numbers that contribute to our score for each round, because each line is a round in rock, paper, scissors. Uh, we get some points depending on what we play. So if we play paper, then we get... Sorry, if we play rock, we get one point. If we play paper, we get two points. And if we play scissors, we get three points. Um, and also it depends on um, whether we win. So if we lose, then we get no points. If we draw, then we get three points. And if we win, then we get six points. So we just basically need to simulate this tournament, apply the rules, and figure out <clears throat> what our total score is going to be at the end. So here's my code. It's um, pretty standard. Basically, we have a dictionary, which is just a map which is going to map these symbols into numbers to represent rock, paper, or scissors, where zero is going to be rock, one is going to be paper, and two is going to be scissors. We're just going to parse through our input pretty standard, um, you know, just split by new lines and then get the two parts of each line. Um, and then we're going to use this map to turn into numbers, uh, your opponent, what our opponent is going to play and what we're going to play. Now, the great thing about encoding plays as zero, one, or two um, is that we can use mod 3 to decide who's going to win. So basically, if uh, we play 1 and our opponent plays 0, that's going to be a win for us because 1 is exactly 1 greater than 0. And this reflects that um, paper beats rock. Yes, because paper is 1 and rock is 0. So there's a kind of cyclical, cyclical nature um, that is present because we're using this 0, 1, 2 system. Anyway, so we can easily determine if we win, <clears throat> if so we get 6 points, and we can also determine if our opponent wins, that's 3 points. Next, we also have a dictionary, it's actually just an array, that contains the points that we get for playing each specific play. Um, so rock is 1, paper is 2, and scissors is 3, so we just add that score to the end, that plus 1 should not be there, and at the end we just print out our score. So part 1 is pretty standard, um, we just really just simulate through the thing and we know exactly what we're going to play so it's uh, not too difficult of a puzzle. In part two the, elves come the elf comes back and they tell us the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose, Y means you need to end the round at a draw, and Z means you need to win. So it's actually not what we thought because the elf left us early, um, our assumptions were wrong, it turns out that the second column means um, the outcome of the round. So. Here is my code for part two. Instead of X, Y, and Z encoding the plays that we need to make, they encode the offset from our opponent. So for example, um, if our opponent plays zero, which is rock, um, then we need to play one less than that if we are given X, because playing one less than any given number is going to lose to that number. So as another example, um, two is going to lose to zero, uh, because two is one less than zero, mod three, um, so if we are given X then we are, and our opponent plays A, then we are going to play 2. That actually works out a little bit better because what we have is that we have our results, which is either negative 1, 0, or 1 for loss, draw, and win. And those are in a nice linear map with um, the number of points we get for each outcome. So a negative 1 is a loss, and that corresponds to 0. A 0 is a draw, which corresponds to 3. And 1 is a win, which is 6. So all we have to do is multiply the results uh, add 1 to the results and then multiply by 3 to get the score we get for winning. 
Um, and then the other thing is pretty simple. We just need to determine what we're going to play. So we're going to add our offsets from our opponent's play, take that mod three, negative numbers are going to wrap around um, and just use the score key to find how we're going to be rewarded for playing rock, paper, or scissors. At the end, we just print out our score again, so that's pretty simple. So that's it for Advent of Code 2022 Day 2 Solutions. Um, today's puzzle was pretty straightforward, didn't require any special algorithms, just simulation and parsing input. So it's starting off, you know, not too hard, which is a good sign, unlike 2019. Um, I think it's going to be a fun year. Looking at the leaderboard for D2, people were once again ridiculously fast. Um, they solved, let's see, um, they solved the puzzles in, I mean, the first first place person solved it in 2 minutes and 38 seconds, which is just ridiculous. Um, they must have some kind of special setup, or they're just really fast at coding. Um, probably they're just really fast at coding. I solved it in a bit longer. Uh, let's look at my personal stats. I solved part one in four minutes. Sorry, part one in five minutes, or closer to six minutes, and part two in nine minutes, which is a little bit slower. I thought I'd be a bit faster, but you know, just got to practice um, to get on that leaderboard. So I don't know how I feel exactly about going super fast for these puzzles, but for the first few days, I think um, I'll try to be competitive and make my way onto the leaderboard. I don't know if that's going to be sustainable because the puzzles get a lot harder as the days go, but but I'm going to give it a go. And if I get on the leaderboard, um, that's going to be great. So that's it for day two. Again, my code will be linked in the description. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for day three.